So far, we've primarily focused on the carbonyl carbon as an electrophile, that carbonyl carbon really being the key point of reactivity in carbonyl compounds. In this unit, we're going to shift to looking at the carbon connected to the carbonyl carbon, the carbon known as the alpha carbon. And we'll see that the alpha carbon is rather acidic, quite a bit more acidic than a plain vanilla alkane, for example. And to begin to understand why that's the case, we can return to our understanding of the carbonyl group as an electron withdrawing group. We've seen it act in this context, for example, with an attached pi system making this carbon right here, which is known as the beta carbon, electrophilic. The carbon between the beta carbon and the carbonyl carbon is known as the alpha carbon. And the alpha carbon is rather acidic. To see why this is the case, let's set up a substrate that's very similar to that first molecule, but just where we've replaced the CC double bond with the CH bond. We can actually think about this hydrogen as relatively acidic, relatively easy, easily plucked off by a base, thanks to the exact same electron flow, flow that we just looked at for the unsaturated carbonyl compound. What this ends up doing is putting negative charge on the alpha carbon. And that negative charge on the alpha carbon indicates that that's a nucleophilic position. So in this unit, we're going to dig into the nucleophilic reactivity of the alpha carbon, in particular via two important reactive intermediates, the enolate, which is the conjugate base of a carbonyl compound, and the enol, which is an isomer of a carbonyl compound known as a tautomer that's nonetheless still nucleophilic at the alpha position. So this is going to open the door to a lot of carbon-carbon bond forming reactions. We can, for example, combine the nucleophilic nature of this carbon with the electrophilic nature of the carbonyl carbon in the aldol reaction. We'll see how that works. And it's going to greatly expand the synthetic possibilities that you have. We can make a variety of very structurally complex molecules using these reactions in conjunction re with reactions you've previously seen in organic one and two. All right, let's talk learning objectives. Now, this is a very, very large list of learning objectives for this unit because this unit, at least in the Klein third edition textbook, encompasses formation of enols and enolates, basic functionalization reactions at the alpha position where we do a, a substitution of an H at the alpha position for an electrophile, as well as more complicated condensations like the aldol clasin condensations, conjugate additions like the Michael reaction. There's a ton of stuff here, but for the time being, we're going to start by recognizing the acidity of alpha carbons, appreciating where that comes from via resonance and inductive effects. We're gonna look at tautomerization, which is the conversion of a ketone or aldehyde into its enol form, which is an isomeric structure. As we'll see, we'll look at the structures of enols as well as the mechanisms of tautomerization in acid and base. We'll learn to appreciate when enolization is favorable. To this point, we haven't seen a ton of enols. Carbonyl compounds are typically drawn with a CO double bond, and there are very good reasons for that, although there are cases where the enol is favored, is stabilized, and we'll dig into those. We'll look at enolates as nucleophiles at both carbon and oxygen here, and we'll learn how to generate enolates using an appropriate base. In particular, when there is an issue of the substitution pattern of the enolate, two different alpha carbons um, exist in, in many ketones, for example, and we can choose the base strategically to generate one enolate or the other. Then we'll start to look at reactions involving enols and enolates. Alpha halogenation is one of the most conceptually simple reactions where we use a halogen electrophile in conjunction with an enolate or enol. We'll also look at SN2 alkylations, and you'll hear me say these don't work that great, but under the right circumstances, they can uh, do a great job of establishing CC bonds by taking advantage of SN2 reactivity of enolates. And then we'll look at two more robust approaches for establishing CC bonds at a carbonyl alpha carbon that do involve multiple steps, multiple reaction steps, but reliably avoid some of the issues with these SN2 alkylations that we'll see. In particular, they're called the malonic ester synthesis and the acetoacetic ester synthesis. In the second half of the unit, we'll dig into condensation reactions in which two carbons from carbonyl compounds are involved primarily. Aldol reactions of ketones and aldehydes and all of their various complexities. We'll learn how to do a crossed aldol reaction with a nucleophile and electrophile that have different structures. And then we'll look at the Claisen condensation, which is essentially nucleophilic acyl substitution applied to an enolate 
nucleophile with an ester electrophile. Look at cross clasins, and then we'll dig back into alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds and see how the beta carbon in an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound like this can act as an electrophile, and that opens the door to some new reactions, new synthetic possibilities, that kind of thing. And then finally, the Robinson annulation is a beautiful reaction that combines aldol type and Michael type reactivity in what is ultimately a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition that occurs in a stepwise fashion as opposed to the concerted diels alder reaction. To make it easier to talk about carbons in the vicinity of a carbonyl group, we use Greek letters. So here's the carbonyl carbon. The alpha carbons are one carbon away. Beta carbons are two carbons away. Gamma carbons are three carbons away, etc. You typically won't hear beyond gamma. The two most important carbons, without question, are the alpha and beta positions. And for this unit, the alpha position is most important for sure. These positions are mildly acidic. The pKa is about 20. And if you think about where this puts these compounds sort of in the pantheon of acidity, this is way, way more acidic than a plain vanilla alkane. That's because the carbonyl group is electron withdrawing, as we'll see. And, you know, this means that alpha positions of carbonyl compounds can be deprotonated using bases like NH2 minus, H minus, and of course, carbanions as well. We'll see in the very near future that carbonyl compounds have an isomeric form known as an enol. So we're going to start referring to the form of the carbonyl compound that we're used to with the CO double bond as the keto form. When we deprotonate at the alpha position of the keto form, this places negative charge at the alpha carbon, and the resulting intermediate is an enolate. Now, the enolate is resonance stabilized. We can push electrons like this. And the beauty of this alternative resonance form is, well, first of all, it puts negative charge on the oxygen. That's great. And it shows us where the name enolate comes from. The en part of the name comes from the carbon-carbon double bond here. And the olate part of the name comes from the negative charge on oxygen. So both resonance forms are completely valid, completely fine. This is probably the more significant resonance form in that there's probably more negative charge on the more electronegative oxygen atom. However, this second best resonance form points us to reactivity, specifically the reactivity of the alpha carbon. In the enolate, both that alpha carbon and the carbonyl oxygen are nucleophilic, and this is key to the reactivity of the enolate. We can protonate the enolate not at the alpha carbon, where the original proton was removed. I mean, that is a possibility, but we'll get us back to the keto form. We can also protonate at the carbonyl oxygen, and this leads to a structure known as an enol. It's called an enol because we have the CC double bond, en, and we have the OH group, the origin of all. And the enol is isomeric with the keto form. This is worth pausing and checking on your own. Count the atoms in these two molecules and make sure that you can see that they are indeed isomers. And this isomerization from the keto to enol form is very, very rapid since it just involves two proton transfers, right? For example, in base, we deprotonate first and then put the proton back on. And so thinking about keto enol equilibrium in a carbonyl context turns out to be very important. To start getting familiar with the acidity of the alpha position, I think it's helpful to consider ketones, aldehydes, and carboxylic acid derivatives and the relative acidities of these different types of carbonyl compounds. And when we throw carboxylic acid derivatives in the mix, the key thing to keep in mind here is that at least via resonance, the heteroatom that's connected to the carbonyl carbon can donate electron density to the carbonyl car carbon. This tends to lower the acidity of the alpha position since the entire carbonyl containing functional group is less withdrawing in this case than it is in the case of an aldehyde or ketone. So the trend in acidity here is we have amides are far and away the least acidic, followed by esters, ketones, aldehydes, and acyl chlorides are the most acidic in this series. And this may look a little bit curious if you're thinking about resonance, that chlorine has a lone pair that can be donated in, but the inductive effect of the chlorine is massive, right? And so that makes the carbonyl carbon here very electrophilic and the alpha hydrogen very acidic. Negative charge is stabilized by this electronegative chlorine, right? So the, the enolate is actually stabilized to some extent by the presence of that chlorine. Acid aldehyde, because of its hydrogen, is relatively electrophilic as ketones and aldehydes go. Ketones benefit a little bit from the inductive donating effect of their extra attached alkyl group relative to an aldehyde. And in the ester and amide, well, we have this great electron flow where we donate electrons to the carbonyl carbon, and this decreases 
the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon. That's why I've drawn these blue highlightings a little bit smaller in the cases of these carboxylic acid derivatives. These are not very electrophilic at the carbonyl carbon, and that diminishes the acidity of this alpha proton and to some extent destabilizes the enolates of esters and amides relative to, say, a ketone or aldehyde enolate.